Hey everyone, this is John Moran with Solutions 8, and today we're going to be answering a question that we get all the time. Uh, and because it's a very good question that is asked, and that is, why do you run other forms of remarketing alongside of a smart shopping campaign? And smart shopping, as you know, is heavily remarketing. It is inbound on a massive scale. It is outbound on a slightly larger scale um, <laughs> than inbound because it does search with display select. But also the remarketing portion, it makes up at least, I would say, 33 to 40% of all activity inside of smart shopping, and for good reason. Dynamic remarketing works, and that's why dynamic remarketing is built into smart shopping. It's What dynamic remarketing is, is when you go to a website that is having products for sale, and you, you visit there from either an ad click or organic or direct or from a Facebook campaign, whatever it may be, dynamic remarketing kicks in on Google and proactively targets you with ads about the product that you either a spent the majority of the time on b left from so your exit page or c placed it into your cart and did not check out so dynamic marketing is is very very good very powerful very powerful for e-commerce it's more powerful than any form of remarketing for e-commerce but why when you have a smart shopping campaign do we always run a dynamic marketing campaign and there's a couple reasons one the smart shopping campaign may have a very specific set of goals uh, and what that goal may be is new customer acquisition, or it might be looking at um, a high return on ad spend restriction, which is what's called target return on ad spend. And so when you have a high return on ad spend restriction, Google gets very selective about who they're going to show a dynamic product remarketing ad to, and is selecting the person based on if they believe that if they put an ad in front of that person and that person does click, will they get at least three, four, five, six, seven, seven, we have some campaigns running at a thousand percent return on ad spend goal. Now, if I was a person that will buy, um, but Google doesn't believe that I'm going to buy, it's not going to place a dynamic product ad in front of me in a form of remarketing. It says, you know what, we have a 500% return on ad spend goal. This person probably ID. 264 or 379, whatever Google thinks of John Moran, which is me. Um, and it says, I don't believe this person is going to going to purchase. So dynamic marketing uh, through smart shopping says no. And it doesn't put an ad in front of me because if it does and I click and I don't buy, it didn't meet that goal. So how do you target that person? Well, running a supplementary dynamic marketing campaign without a heavy restriction, which means it's not focused on either target CPA, maximize conversion value, maximize conversions. There's no, no, sorry, maximize conversion value or a um, target uh, cost per acquisition. If you're running a maximized conversion bidding strategy or even you know maximum CPB, uh, sorry, maximum CPC campaign, uh, like a manual one, instead of dynamic marketing, it's gonna be really not selective uh, if they believe you're going to purchase or not. So it has less of a, um, I guess, for lack of a better word, prejudice against that user because it's going to say, hey, this person was on our site. Smart Shopping's not putting a dynamic product remark in front of them. I will. And so how do you balance the two? Because if you're going after the same person, sometimes how do you choose? Well, on your Smart Shopping campaign, you can have a very high spend because you have a very high goal. I'll give it, sometimes I'll give campaigns two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000 per day. It'll only spend maybe three or 400 but I will meet that goal. But I've given it enough ad spend in order to target the people correctly, to get them to buy. And all of the other people are just kind of pushed to the wayside and I don't waste money on those. But my dynamic remarketing campaign, I'll run at a much lower daily spend because I know all of those people are gonna be shown an ad. So how do you balance that? Well, you just choose a return on ad spend that is appropriate um, for the dynamic remarketing campaign and adjust your daily spend as needed. I'll show you what I mean by that. So here is a smart shopping campaign and what you'll notice is that the top left of the client is blurred out here, but um, this is my smart shopping campaign. And from February 1st to 23rd, just as an example, we spent $2,200, made 6000 And so this is something that is, you know, having a 265% um, return on ad spent at the time of sale, 198 based on previous clicks. Now, this campaign does run at a very long duration. It's an 18-day lag, so we still... You know, our, we're in the time where there's still not all the purchases. That's why row as time of sale is different than row as. But right now, my smart shopping is getting 265% return in this area here. And I'm spending $2,200 on it. But did you notice that it was only able to find $6,000 worth of value? It was only able to find these 74 purchases. It purposely excluded these 21. Why? Google said, I don't believe 
that I'm going to meet the return on investment goal. Now this goal has a 250% return on investment. So I know it, I know it's performing, it's performing where I, where I want it, but it's missing out. It's not targeting everybody because as you can see in the dynamic remarketing, we had another 36,000 clicks and my average cost per click is very, very inexpensive. Let me just see if I can bring in an average CPC. I'll bring that up here to the top. <clears throat> Average cost per click at dynamic marketing is three pennies. So I'm like, hey, well, that's that's great. I will spend $10 a day. And sometimes it'll actually go over that budget. Google will go over that budget by sometimes substantial, but it'll actually only charge you two times what your daily ad spend will be, even if it spends 10 times. It's only gonna, this is why it says, hey, we're, you're only gonna be charged um, $527 for the campaign, even though you could go over. So if it goes over, don't worry about it. It, it will happen, uh, but it's not gonna charge you for it. So it's okay. <clears throat> but the dynamic marketing, I had another 36,000 clicks. It only cost me $1,000, but I made 2,700. So the return on ad spend of here is, you know, it says it's 250. So 250% return on ad spend, um, time of sale. This one here is ROAS during this time. Um, again, conversion lag. If you don't understand conversion lag, we have a video about conversion lag. So that's why these numbers are different. But this is a really good, you know, return on ad spend um, for a dynamic marketing campaign that found an additional 21 conversions that smart shopping did not. Now, smart shopping usually will take up most of your of your clicks uh, on remarketing, unless you have a very high ROAS. I'm being very selective of these people. And this one's been growing over time. But running a dynamic remarketing campaign, you'll see another one down here. This one is um, international. This one's only to US. So that's why it's, it's different. This one's new. It actually launched uh, like a couple days ago. So it's not in this time frame. But this does a really good job illustrating that the people that are clicking on the uh, display campaign here, there's another 904 clicks. People um, that have clicked in Smart Shopping, people that have clicked in from YouTube, um, Smart Shopping may not think that they're ready to buy yet. But Dynamic Marketing says, fine, I'll, I'll take those users. I'll, I'll show an ad in front of them as well. And plus all the other people that are coming in from organically and, and from other channels. So using a dynamic marketing campaign and when it runs, it runs very well and it can achieve a very substantial uh, return if you're if you're balancing it correctly. Now, if I put this thing up to a thousand dollars a day, like my smart shopping campaign, um, this thing will spend a thousand dollars a day. It will do it. And sometimes possibly even more. So that's what I mean by balancing your budget, making sure that you're the leftover money that you are giving into the display remarketing campaign is proportionately um, correct to what the return is and to what you want the overall account to spend and also in comparison to what the smart shopping campaign is spending. So hopefully this gives you a good insight as to why you want to run multiple types of remarketing because certain campaigns are going to have certain goals and are only going to go after certain audiences. So how do you capture everyone else? Then have remarketing is a way to do that. Another kind of a quick tip if you wanted to is to run a standard uh, remarketing campaign that's not dynamic. So still remarketing to the users that came to your site, did not buy, spent at least 10 seconds on there, visited at least you know one product or added one product to cart, however you want to segment the audience. And putting a brand campaign in front of a brand messaging. So really big, beautiful custom imagery, uh, lifestyle images, um, you know, in-use images. Think outside of just dynamic remarketing. Um, the return on that spend, I almost would guarantee you is not going to be anywhere near dynamic remarketing. But if you said, I'm just so annoyed with showing just a product image with a product title and a price and a logo, and I just, I don't like these, run subsequent remarketing campaigns that are not dynamic, and you can target also those people. So they're not only seeing your products, but they're seeing the lifestyle images. I'd bid probably even less for lifestyle images on display. I'd probably have a lower budget, um, lower daily ad spend, because I would pretty much guarantee you that the ROAS on a lifestyle standard responsive display campaign that's remarketing not dynamic is going to be a lot less effective than the other campaigns, but does give you control to deliver the right message in the way you want that message delivered to the audience. Um, and it could be, you know, hey, we're having a sale next week, or you know, hey, there's a coupon code if you wanted to. A lot of different ways you can get creative in your in your in your controlled remarketing that is not dynamic, where it's using the feed and automatically matching those users with those specific products. Um, and that's it. So hopefully this video was helpful, but um, this is the reason why we'd like to run dynamic remarketing alongside of Smart Shopping that's also doing dynamic remarketing just with a different set of goals. And it's important to remember what campaign is after what goal,
because there's ways to help it or supplement it or even you know kind of go around it and capture different audiences. Uh, so John Rail Solutions 8, and if you um, like this video, please like, comment, share, subscribe, do all the fun things that, that make us nerd YouTube famous. <laughs> um, I appreciate your time. Thanks.